Some folks call this thing here a guitar. Funny. You want to hear something? Okay. Okay. <laughs> Promise me that you won't laugh. I won't laugh. I won't. I'm trusting you. The Last of Us is one of my favorite games of all time. I beat The Last of Us 2 immediately as soon as it came out. I played it for three days straight. I locked myself in my pitch black theater. I beat The Last of Us and I fucking hated it. keep it very simple okay when i beat the game i hated it because this 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 This? But we're done. And this? Get up. And this? And this? Oh, I got it, I got it. Hey. You sitting all comfy way out here? Hey. This? You're such an asshole. Hey! I saved your life! You didn't save my life, you ruined my death! That's what you're Listen. Doing. And this? Abby. No! Abby, don't look. Dad! And this. Come on, little dude. Ellie? Hey, Ellie. Look at me. It's okay. You're home. You're home. Holy fuck. Make it stop. I fucking get it, dude. It's fucking depressing. I get it. She's paying for her revenge. I fucking get it. You can't even play the fucking guitar? What's the, what's the point? How are they gonna make all this shit worth it? How? How the fuck is this all gonna be worth it? Are you fucking ki That's how it felt. Naughty Dog really put us through the most depressing game ever for the most basic message ever. I show the fucking meme. Hey, what's up? How's that? Last of Us Part 2. It was alright. What? There was this guy. He was really cool, but then he got brutally murdered. 
I wanted to get revenge. So what'd you do about it? I got revenge. Whoa, what? Guys, don't be like my friend here who got revenge. Getting revenge is part of the problem. Take care. Bye. I wasn't even mad. I was disappointed. And I felt bad for Naughty Dog because I know they really tried, but they finally, after I think 11 or 12 games where they were just perfect, they failed. Everyone online was giving it zeros, talking shit. Last of Us 2 was a failure. One of my favorite franchises was ruined. And then Dunky released the video. Show up in the back half of the game, and he'll go, "Hey, I remember that guy." <laughs> Characters will do things you won't agree with, and you'll have to turn your brain on and attempt to empathize with them. In the world of Last of Us Part Two, one hateful act begets another, but a selfless act can also be contagious. And I went, "Oh shit!" Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Run that back. In the world of Last of Us Part 2, one hateful act begets another, but a selfless act can also be contagious. You know, it's kind of tough. <laughs> Caught up in the hood without a, <laughs> without a positive male role model to look up to. Message! A selfless act can be contagious. This simple statement from Dunkey made me finally realize the game and the painful journey is not to tell you that revenge is bad. Every single thing that happens in this game is for Ellie's recovery from the effects of Joel's decision and lie at the end of The Last of Us 1. Back in Boston? Back when I was bitten? I wasn't alone. My best friend was there. And she got bit too. We didn't know what to do. So, she says, let's just wait it out. You know, we can be all poetic and just lose our minds together. I'm still waiting for my turn. Ellie. Her name was Riley and she was the first to die. And then it was Tess, and then Sam. None of that is on you. Oh, you don't understand. I struggled for a long time with surviving. And you, no matter what, you keep finding something to fight for. Now, I know that's not what you want to hear right now. Swear to me. Swear to me that everything that you've said about the Fireflies is true. I swear. Okay. Ellie gave Joel an ultimatum. Right? She tells him all the loss, all the people she's lost, all the struggle to get to this very moment. She has survivor's guilt because she's not sure why she was allowed to live and her best friend, her first love in Riley, wasn't. Her immunity and Joel are the only thing she has left. Joel's lie includes that there are tons of other immune people and the Fireflies didn't even need her to save the world. By accepting Joel's lie, she's accepting that her life and the loss and the sadness, everything was all meaningless, right? And if she knows that Joel is lying, which I think she does, and Joel might even know that she knows he's lying. But if Ellie does know that he's lying, that means she also knows that she's giving up the chance to give her immunity to the world. By saving Ellie at all costs, too, Joel dooms himself to the eventual revenge that kills him in this game. But more importantly, he basically guarantees that Ellie will eventually resent or have a really tough time forgiving him, which is honestly the main thing that she deals with in this game. Joel's aware of this cost, he accepts it, and he even confirms in the game that he would do it all over again given the second chance. Right? And I think that Naughty Dog is implying here that this includes he would accept getting, you know, beat with the golf club by this random chick, right? This torturous death if it meant that in the end, Ellie will live and have a chance to find something in her life to keep on fighting for, right? So the anger that I had towards Joel's death, you know, by, by Abby out of nowhere, this chick who I've never even heard of before, I understood it, right? She was justified in her own revenge even if it wasn't the right move. It made sense. I'm not mad at that anymore. Joel probably expected that to come one day, right, and accepted that fate in exchange for giving him more time with Ellie and for her to find for herself what she was for him, a reason to keep fighting. 
Ellie thinks and ultimately accepts Joel's lie and all the implications that come with it, right? Those implications, you know, plus confirming with Joel that it was a lie, plus Joel's horrific death that she had to see from a few feet away right after she tried to, to find a way to forgive him, right? This all pushes Ellie into this extremely dark place in her life, perfectly symbolized by the main menu screen. This entire painful, depressing story and all the depressing moments of the game are representative of Ellie's journey to get out of this darkness, but to also do justice and avenge Joel the way he deserved. The Last of Us 2 is not a chore of pain and suffering just for the final message to be that revenge is bad. The Last of Us 2 is about the battle Ellie has with herself to find forgiveness, not only for Joel, but for her sacrifices that she made for him at the end of the first game and throughout the revenge journey in this game. As you play the game and get revenge with both characters, there's moments where they force you to, to hit square and do these things that you really don't think is the right thing. It feels wrong. It feels wrong as Ellie to smack this girl who's gonna die anyway with a pipe. When you're playing as Abby beating up Ellie, it feels wrong. And the reason it does is because the characters themselves feel the same way. They're not acting out of, of control or sense. They're acting out of blind revenge. They're blinded by their hate for the other side, and it doesn't matter what they're doing. They're lost. They're acting on emotion. So Ellie acts in self-defense in a lot of these situations, but the bigger issue is that she's trying to pretend that she's Joel. She's trying to do what Joel would do for her in these situations. An example of this is when Ellie tries to go and interrogate Owen and Mel to get information. She uses Joel's technique. Now, the girl. Is she alive? What girl? I don't know no girl. <laughs> Fuck! Focus right here, right here. And I'll pop your goddamn knee off. The girl. She's alive. She's David's newest pet. Where? In the town. In the town. Now you're gonna mark it on the map. And it better be the same exact spot your buddy points to. Mark it. It's right there. You can verify it. Go ask him. Go on. I tell you. I ain't lying. I ain't. <laughs> Fuck you, man! He told you what you wanted! I ain't telling you shit! That's alright. I believe in him. No, wait! Give her what she wants and we're dead. You guys can survive this. I just need her. Bullshit. You. Come here. Fucking get over here! Point to where she is on this map. And then you... It better fucking match up. Okay. What are you doing? She's probably dead anyway. It is not worth Stop. it. Stop! We can talk Back about- Back the fuck up! Point to where she is. Fucking boys! <laughs> Ellie is in a revenge cycle with Abby and herself at the same time. Ellie has the exact same problem as Aang. This is the last chakra, isn't it? Yes. Once you open this chakra, you will be able to go in and out of the Avatar state at will. And when you are in the Avatar state, you will have complete control and awareness of all your actions. Meditate on what attaches you to this world. Now, let all of those attachments go. Let them flow down the river, forgotten. I'm sorry, but I can't let go of Katara. And to master the Avatar state, you must open all the chakras. Surrender yourself. Okay, I'll try. Now think of your attachments and let them go. Let the pure cosmic energy flow.
By choosing attachment, you have locked the chakra. If you leave now, you won't be able to go into the avatar state at all. It takes Ellie going back and forth multiple times. She never needed to do what Joel would do, right? The only thing Joel wanted for Ellie and what he sacrificed himself for was for her to be safe and to be happy. She keeps going back for revenge because she's hunted by the guilt of the weight of her choice at the end of the first game and not returning the favor for Joel's sacrifices he made for her. Seconds away from finally completing her revenge path with Abby, she has the positive flashback and realizes not only that her revenge with Abby won't solve anything, but it's not what Joel would have wanted Ellie to do to honor him in the first place. What Joel wanted was her to be happy and free. Doing what Joel would do, which is all out revenge at any cost, didn't get her that. And it wasn't until she was seconds away from achieving it that she could learn this for herself. She's at rock bottom right now, but she finally learns the hard way to let things go. She's left alone in this foggy, dark ocean that has been her life to this point with only one thing left to do to really free herself from the control of her obligation she felt she had to Joel. Ellie returns to the farmhouse for one last challenge. She must let go of Joel and fully forgive him and herself so she can finally move on. Joel never wanted her to become a, a revengeful, cold-hearted killer, and to really do justice by Joel, she must go and find her own reasons to keep fighting. She needs to be free to make her own decisions and hopefully forgive and remember Joel in a positive light. Through the journey she just completed, Ellie learned to let go of her complex emotions and make the right decision, the decision that both her and Joel wanted in their final conversation. Drinking coffee. Where'd you get that? Uh, those people that came through last week. Oh. I'm a little embarrassed as to what I had to trade to get it, but it's not bad. I had Seth under control. Yeah, I know. And you need to stop harassing Jesse about my patrols. Okay. Uh, Dana. Is she your girlfriend? No. No, she, that was just one kiss. It doesn't mean anything. She just, I don't know why she did that. But you do like her. <sighs> so stupid. I have no idea what that girl's intentions are, but. But I do know that she would be lucky to have you. You're so 
such an asshole. I'm not trying to. I was supposed to die in that hospital. My life would have fucking mattered. But you took that from me. Somehow, the Lord gave me a second chance at that moment. I would do it all over again. I don't think I can ever forgive you for that. But I would like to try. I like that. Ellie saved him, and now Joel saved her, even from beyond the grave. Right? This game has many messages and a lot of suffering, but it wasn't for the messages alone. The entire journey was to save Ellie, just as we did for Joel in the first game. This game is not perfect, but neither is the first one. A lot of the things that people are complaining about in this game are something that Naughty Dog has done in dang near every other game that they have made. Right? I believe the only reason you can really hate this game and love the first one is if you don't understand that the entire journey and struggle was to redeem Ellie just like we did Joel. The messages that are taught in this game that are represented so authentically in this game, the fact that they didn't treat their characters as if they deserved anything and they only had them have authentic experiences in the world that they were in makes me respect this game so much, right? The message of this game is so powerful for where we're at right now as people as all we can seem to do is continue to argue and fight and keep going through these growing pains as people that seem like they're never going to end. Maybe if we can let go of our emotions like Ellie does, put them in a place where we can reference them when we need them, maybe our fucked up world will be a little less fucked up and we can get a little bit closer to the light. And... Abby is shown to have made it back to the Fireflies on Catalina Island by the main menu screen after you beat the game. And Ellie's now finally free to choose her own life path. She's still looking for that true meaning in her life. She may go back to Dina and Tommy, right, and forgive them and they forgive each other, but she would still feel that obligation to give her immunity to the world. And there's no way Abby doesn't tell her new Firefly group that she found the same girl that her dad died for who happens to be immune. She could finally make the choice to sacrifice herself and maybe, maybe with a, with a certain way they could do it in this game, Ellie could survive the surgery maybe, or maybe she has to sacrifice her entire life, maybe. But The Last of Us World either way would have a happy ending with their cure going around all thanks to Ellie. Part 2 would basically become Naughty Dog's Empire Strikes Back, right? And Part 3 would be the Return of the Jedi. Joel was Obi-Wan, Ellie was Darth Vader and Luke Skywalker combined, and her sacrifice would save the world and make everything, all the pain, Joel's death, her loss, all worth it in the end. After really thinking extra hard on this game just to make this video, I can confidently say I've gone from absolutely hating this game to considering it a very worthy sequel to the first game, a masterpiece in, a, in storytelling, and I have to say a 10 out of 10 overall game, even though it has flaws. 
the biggest message is not that revenge is bad. It's that revenge and forgiveness and hate and love and your ego, everything is the same. You're so passionate about these things you care about that you're blinded and you have a bias when you look at the big picture and what's the best decision for you and for the others around you. Both Abby and Ellie dedicate their entire being to avenging their father figures, when in reality, both Joel and Abby's father would have told them to let them go and move on with their life and find something to make them happy. For Abby, that would have been Owen. For Ellie, that would have been Dina. Abby learns the lesson a little bit sooner than Ellie, but both end up at the same position and trying to find happiness where they can, right? Basically, it's Moby Dick. Joel and Joel or Abby's dad, Joel or Abby's dad, what's his name? Jerry, Jerry Anderson. Joel or Mr. Anderson, Dr. Anderson are the fucking whale. They're Moby Dick and Ellie and Abby are both Ahab and they go too far chasing the, the fucking prize. Basically, it's, it's Moby Dick Star Wars. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Do you not understand? How do you not understand? Naughty Dog is forcing us, the fans in real life, to go through the exact same journey as Ellie. If we can let go of the rage and our egos controlling how we see what they did to our favorite game and our favorite characters and see the big picture and what it does for Ellie in the end, one of our favorite characters, what it does for her and the possible amazing finale it sets The Last of Us up for, I think most of us can see how powerful this game actually is. I love this game now. I hope I help somebody out there who hated the game like I did uh, come to realize how amazing this game is. It's my first gaming video and I'm so glad I got to talk about The Last of Us to hopefully start where I can do more videos because I have a ton more things to talk about with this game. So appreciate you guys for watching. Let me know how I did. Let me know what you think. Let me know. You know, we can talk about this in the comments. Appreciate you. Let me know. Comment. Let's talk. It's your boy Sally. Much love. Six. Hell yeah, nigga. <laughs>